Hi, so in this video we're going to talk about how you can create your own Wi-Fi jammer, also called the Wi-Fi deauthor or the Wi-Fi whatever you call it, like you're going to tease someone with creating a, creating a lot of fake a, a, a piece. You know, I came up with this unit right here. As you can see, it's a small uh, plastic unit. And I'm going to start out with the actual 3D printing because I wanted to create a good touch, a good finishing touch. So I went ahead and found this 3D model right here. As you can see, you can keep the pins on while the box is closed. If you wish to do that, then you can put it in the top. Another one, you know, uh, I actually, you know, took them off because I didn't want them to be there. Now the actual unit itself will then lie inside the case just like this. And the unit itself uh, is something that I already showed you in another video, but this is, this is the 3D printing. It is not necessary at all. There is like a slim box and a normal box and different kind of box. I chose the slim version, the one that they show right here. That is the slim version. So the slim version is the version that, you know, just gonna have a tight fit on the actual box. You will see the small uh, blue LED um, light blink one time when you charge it. And I'm gonna charge it with my power bank I have right here with a standard USB-C cable. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna plug in my USB cable in my power bank and then my power bank will go directly into the uh, small unit here, which I'm gonna show you if I can show you the small, if you're gonna look pretty careful, you probably saw it. That's the top right there, right outside. It's a small blue blink, which basically means that the Wi Fi network is now online. The Wi Fi network is gonna create a small, um, yeah, network. It's gonna be called um, Pwned. And it's something you can connect to on your phone. So if you take your phone, I'm gonna show you mine. And. Go and check out the network. You can see that it created this network here called Pwned. It's a good signal strength. Maybe it's difficult to see, but I'm sorry for that. But um, it's just a network you connect to on your phone and the password is the author. That is a general thing that is about this. So when you, when you did that, um, then you can connect to it and you're gonna have an interface. And the interface is um, something that I can show uh, in a different video, uh, but this video is more like how to install it, how to use the software, what to do, and general questions about you know how it's, it's gonna be. So I'm just gonna <clears throat> make this link work right here. There you go. So, Basically, you know, I'm gonna take off the unit now of the power bank and basically just put it on the other side. So, the thing is, if you want to create it like this with a small box, it's a portable thing, you can have it. It's kind of protected in a way so you don't like bash it and it's gonna get destroyed. But it's, it's okay, it, it's, it's very small, as you can see I have it in my hand, very, very small, small one. And um, it's created with a, with a unit called the ESP. Um, 8266. This is the one that I actually bought. I bought three of them. This was my, was my price. Um, a bit pricey compared to what I can get it for in different places. But you know, I just wanted it uh, here and now. I wanted to make sure that I had, you know, um, I bought it from the, the best possible way so I can get it. If anything happened to it, I can get a, you know, a new one and so on. This is the unit you actually need, first of all. Now, when you connect that unit to your computer, there are different several issues that can happen. So let me just be clear with you. Um, if you're gonna take, for example, a small USB cable like that with a um, USB, uh, small USB cable and a normal USB, just like that, probably not gonna work. Right? You're gonna ask me why, and I had that issue. You know, uh, I read about it, and they they all said like you need to use a quality cable. It's like what is a quality cable? 
is it the price of it or what is it? Well, I haven't really made that up yet, but I I did find out that if you're gonna use a cable that works, take the cable you charge your phone with. If you have a phone charging cable with a normal USB, small USB, and a mini USB and a normal USB, that's gonna be your way to go. Not really sure why, but the, my my plug and play driver on Windows didn't say like dun dun that sound when I plugged into my computer. So you basically have to make sure that you get that sound on a Windows computer. I cannot really say what it's gonna sound on Linux. I don't think it's gonna sound like anything, not, not, nothing, unless you're using some fancy UI on Linux, maybe it's gonna make a noise. I have no idea what it is. Even on Mac, I'm just gonna say for Windows. So I put that away and I used a bigger and longer cable, which is somewhere on my table in my mess <laughs> that is used for and you know, it was a long one um, for um, my phone and then my computer recognized the unit and I could then uh, well then the unit could be connected to my computer and I would be able to flash the actual unit with software and this is the next topic we're going to talk about so we we have the 3d printing box if you want that it's optional I just wanted to do the finishing touch you have the, the, the chips you need that, of course. And then you basically need to make sure, and this is a thing that's gonna happen to you at some point, you need probably need to install a driver or something in order to make a computer communicate with it. Now, if your computer doesn't really recognize that you need to install this driver, and there are different kinds of drivers here, you know, it's, it, you can probably use a universal Windows driver. I actually went ahead and used the um, normal CP210X Windows driver. It, it contains uh, a, um, I think it contains like an exit file something like that. But basically, the 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 driver is what you're gonna need because when you flash, and this is the name for it, think about it when you move some data from my computer to a USB stick like just like that, then you just say you copy the data, right? But when you put data on the actual chip, this chip here, it's called flash, right? <laughs> doesn't really matter now, it's just a name, okay? So when you flash the data, you move the data, you copy the data, whatever, right? You flash the data to the chip, this chip here. The computer is gonna try and recognize that through a COM port. And it is connected through USB port. So in the driver that, that kind of reverse the, um, well, it's, it, what, what do you call it? It, it, it? What is the word in English? I kind of forgot it, but it, it, it kind of, emulate that you know you connect it through com port and then you you do it through usb so it's a usb to com um converter that we have the converter yeah um so so this is why i need the driver the program we're going to use is the one right here it's called esp 8266 flasher now there are other programs you can go ahead and try i had success with this and then you're, gonna, you're probably gonna ask me now, how, how does that program look like? But you know, I prepare that as well. I downloaded the file right here. And when you open the program, I'm gonna show you it looks like this. It will tell you that there's a COM1. Now, very uncommon, it's gonna be one. You know, if it works, and you connect your device to the computer, it's gonna say this magic sound like dun dun and it's gonna automatically change to the active COM port. Mine was number three. Okay, yours could be number four, number five, or number two, just not one. That's gonna be like a default that is not really there. So what you're gonna do is when when you when it's picked automatically, uh, you're gonna go into a config and then you need to pick the actual binary file that you downloaded from the repository. I'm gonna show you where that is in just a moment, but it's just one file, it's a bin file for binary. And then you're gonna go ahead and take the path and press the, um, the small wheel and just put it in and pick that file, you know, this file right here as the file you have. And, and, and that's, that's it, right? That's really it. Then you go back and click flash, you know, boom, done. Nothing more needs to go. Okay, so when that is done, when it's done flashing and this uh, bar here below is all filled up, there's gonna be a small green marker saying like, check mark, done. It's not gonna say done, it's just gonna be a check mark, right? 
Then you know it's done, it's probably gonna take one, two minutes, maybe more, depending on the speed of your computer. So yeah, that's gonna be uh, really it. And um, so when you flash that software, it's gonna be, you know, on the chip and then you're ready to go basically, that's it really. So after that, um, you can connect that to your, as I just showed you before, was the first, first demonstration connect this uh, unit you just flashed with the software to units, mini USB and it's going to create a Wi-Fi that we can connect to and the password is going to be the author. Um, that can change in the future so you should basically go ahead and check out the releases and this is where the, um, the releases are. It is from a guy called Space Hunt. He also has a YouTube channel and you have lots of software and lots of different things you could do and um, Basically, I want to say, he's the go-to guy if you want to, um, if you have any, any questions about the software, because I haven't, I haven't created it, I'm just showing you how to use it and how to put it on a chip. Now, you're going to go ahead and say, show all 39 different assets, and it got many different names here. The one that I picked was the one for the Node MCU version, uh, it's a 7 version 2 right down below here. I guess that is what 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 is all up. But that is the one I chose, and the size is small. It's all the same all the way through. But this is the one. It's going to be a bin file, and when that is downloaded, you will get this file right here, which is the one you will choose in the config. Do nothing more than that, and click just click flash. Basically, that's it. So, so that's uh, that's really going to be it. Um, Things that can go wrong on this process, things that's going to be annoying for you is that you might need to reinstall this driver or restart your computer, you know, something like that. Because since you're connecting the node, um, the ESP module through a mini USB cable, um, you need a driver to convert the signal. That's really going to be it. That can be most of the issues because if you cannot recognize that unit on your computer, it's not going to be able to flash any software on it. So, this is the installation video. I I'm going to briefly go over it all one more time. If you want the box, you can 3D print it. That's not really going to be <laughs> needed. It's optional. Buy the actual ESP module from anywhere. This is the name. Go for the word Node MCU and this name. That's going to be probably the best way to go go ahead and download this all links gonna be in the video description download this one here uh, please pay attention to notes and to sorry new new versions being shipped out and so on i cannot really say anything much about that you can also go ahead and try the one down here below just note mcu if this is the way to go for you you can try any one really it's just up to you i'm just saying what i did and then you need the flasher tool. It's going to just be download and you download it. And you need to install the driver for the computer to convert the signal from COM signal to USB. Um, the software itself is this one. And, and when you have the software, you open this. And if the computer recognizes the uh, ESP unit, it will change it to something different than COM1. If you only see COM1, your computer probably haven't recognized it and, and that's going to be a problem. I had the issue and I restarted my computer and, and installed the driver two times, I think it was, before it worked. I don't know why, it's just the way it is. I cannot explain it, I'm just saying it works. Software is just, just like that sometimes. So be aware of that and have your mindset. Uh, all the other ones here, you know, log advanced, about, don't uh, mind that, just go ahead and click the, the small driver here. Pick the, the file, you know, just like that. You download the bin file, go back to operations. The, the, the address over here is, is, is filled out. If not, just type it OX50. So it's going to be an address to where to write the software. And then the port should be picked. If, you, if you're unsure, you can drop down and see if anything else is there compared to COM1. Click the flash button. The process is going to fill up slowly one, two, three, four, five minutes, depending on your speed. And a uh, green check mark is going to be down in the left button on this window here when it's done. That's really it for the installation of the Wi-Fi jammer. 
In another video, I will uh, show you how this software works and I will um, talk about uh, demonstration type of uh, stuff and show you how it de auth the attack and the, the do the Wi Fi jamming, Wi Fi de authing, all different kind of things. That's going to be the trigger part to record because I really don't want to blur too much out. So I'm going to find a way, but it's probably going to take a while. So hope you learned something for this video. If so, Please give the video a like. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Leave a comment below. I'm going to get back to you. Have a nice day and see you again.